Today our guest is Brad Geis. Saying, Mike, you turn around and you go back and show that woman my love. Welcome to Heritage of Truth. Today, our guest is Brad Geis. Welcome, Brad. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. You have mit written the most incredible, most beautiful book I've seen in a long time. It's called The Call to Missions, Testimonies of Missionaries from Around the World. Well, thank you very much. I am so I, I'm enthralled with this book. He has these, these beautiful, beautiful photographs in here. And look at this little boy. And then he has testimonies of these missionaries. And I mean, that some of them will make you cry. Some of them will make you shout for joy for what God is doing. And I, I just can't say enough good about this book. I absolutely love it. So why don't you tell us how this book came about? I never, first off, ever dreamed of writing a book or ever mm -hmm. had a desire to write a book. The, the Lord really birthed this. I got saved out of a very bad drug addiction. Mm -hmm. a crack cocaine addiction and wow. I had actually pawned my photography equipment except for one camera for crack cocaine and when mm -hmm. I got saved radically I ended up at a big church in New York City Times Square Church under David Wilkerson mm -hmm. and uh, they had a huge missions department or it was actually at that time it was really beginning mm -hmm. and um, they knew I was a photographer and they they said we need a photographer to go out on these trips with us and yeah. they asked me and I remember the night I was asked and the missions director came up to me and said we need you to go on these trips with me so I signed you up to go to Russia and they, she walked away and I'm going what what are you what are you talking about and I that night I was so mad I went home and I was going god I can't go on the mission field I pawned my photography equipment for crack cocaine and and I just uh, he convicted me and just was like you know lay it down give it to me and I did I, that night I said okay god it's in your hands and uh, the next morning, he gave me a huge job, and uh, I had a check come in right before the first mission trip I went on. They bought a camera, and I was reading the instruction manual on the tr on the plane on the way to Russia. He always provides, and doesn't he? When <laughs> he, he calls, does. he provides. He does. But no, I, I got involved with a, mm -hmm. a big missions department, and it's also through Times Square Church, and they have missionaries all over the world. Mm -hmm. And I was sent out. I was very blessed the first few years I, I had the time to go out and they and the means and also it was connected with world challenge missionaries mm -hmm. so I just started going out all over the world and I I've been on over 80 trips now to over wow. 50 different countries mm -hmm. I've seen just about everything there is to, to see and experience in missions how has seeing those kinds of things changed you well I've seen the heart of God mm. and that's the neat thing because I got I got delivered and saved in a kind of a miracle situation God really instantly delivered me mm. and going out on the mission field I saw God at work so I was excited he got my heart he grabbed my heart on the very first trip dealing with orphans and mm. and the least of these of this world mm -hmm. and to see how God was there on the mission field helping us it was just it, it, it was amazing and from the very first trip I was I was hooked did you put a call out to the missionaries and tell them you were doing this book and ask for testimonies or well, how did that work the trips that I started going on from the very beginning mm -hmm. um, I was really being the photographer a lot of these missionaries had been out in the field for so long or mm -hmm. Um, you know, the book is actually from missionaries who've been in the field for over 40 years or more, their whole entire lives, to, to the first time missionary going out on missions trips. Mm -hmm. And I was going out with both teams of missionaries who got sent mm -hmm. from our church mm -hmm. uh, to going visiting missionaries that had been out in the field. And one thing that was intriguing about this is the missionaries would usually go, oh, we have a photographer, let's, let's take Brad out on and show him where God birthed our ministry, mm -hmm. whether it was an orphanage or something like that. Mm -hmm. And 
through the process of just all the years of going on trips, I really realized that what was happening was the missionaries were showing me where God had first laid that burden upon that missionary. Mm. And to go from the burden that was laid on, on their heart to then years later and seeing the mission, the, the ministry that had, he had built right. was amazing. And then a lot of the trips were, were such that we actually saw miracles on. Mm -hmm. And I was there to witness them and to be part of that. And, and it, the book itself got birthed years later when I literally had taken all these pictures and some of them were just blessed by God. I knew he had given me the pictures. And I remember just looking at my file cabinet and I knew all these pictures were in it and I just bowed my head and I said, God, you gave me so many of those pictures. What are they doing? They're just in a file cabinet. Nobody will ever see them. And then within a short period of time later, he birthed this book. And like I said, I've never dreamed of doing a book and he, he birthed it in front of my wife and I. So in all of his wisdom, my wife would never have tolerated me. <laughs> over the years of putting it together but then I contacted all the missionaries around the world mm -hmm. and they were happy to hear from me mm -hmm. some of them I'd contact and say I need a testimony and they'd go wow Brad that's amazing because last night God gave me a dream and he said to prepare a testimony Whoa. and they were going this is from God so they would they do it and yeah. And that affirmation probably mm -hmm. helped you encouraged you while you were writing yes yes and I had a lot of um, a lot of wonderful people have contributed to this book, from David Wilkerson writing the foreword, mm -hmm. to Elizabeth Elliot giving me a testimony that he, she had written, yes. to on and on, a lot of um, mm -hmm. wonderful endorsements. It's, it's all been God. I, I could never have even you know, begun to believe that I could have ever put this book together. One thing that's interesting to me is all the pictures are kind of a sepia color. Did yes. you originally take them in black and white or in color? Or how were they originally taken? All of these pictures, like I told you, um, I had pawned my photography equipment. Mm -hmm. So when I, my first trip on, I, I had brought a camera along mm -hmm. that I used for commercial photography. Mm -hmm. And any photo buffs out there will know what a Hasselblad camera is. Okay, a Hasselblad <laughs> is a square boxed camera that you look down into and you focus and you take a light meter reading. It is the most opposite camera that you should ever take on the mission field. <laughs> and almost every one of these pictures was taken with that camera. Really? They were not taken with like a 35 millimeter. Mm -hmm. um, it, they Very were incredible. taken with a camera where I literally needed to engage the people and ask them to you know, pose for me. And sometimes if they didn't even know the language, I'd go, un foto, un foto, you know, and they would like go, oh, okay. You know, most people are flattered that you'd want to take their picture. And yeah. I, some of these are like, as you've seen, are in some of the worst conditions. Mm -hmm. But were they black and, and, black and white film or? It was black and white film, film that I yeah. put sepia tone to. Oh, they're absolutely gorgeous. I mean, you look at squalor and you've made it beautiful. It's, it's still squalor, and you still see the pain of the people. Yes. But it's also art. Well, thank it's you. absolutely beautiful. Thank you. So. Thank you. I, I just I really appreciate it. One of the things, is this something the publisher did? I just thought this was so interesting. The, um, the edges of the book have, have all these, uh, like, stamps and a passport. Did, did the publisher do that? No, I... Or did you I do that? I pretty much... You know, publishing is so so difficult almost these days because um, a lot of people love the concept of the book mm -hmm. but most people didn't want didn't want to put um, the effort into creating this book so I knew I had a call upon my life to do this book so I I designed pretty much all of wow. it. Wow it's amazing so, are these from your passport? That's all from my passports. Oh, it's so very beautiful it's artistic it's so pretty. Okay, so do you have a favorite story in here or a couple of favorites that you want to there share? There are so many, but I do have a few. Um, okay. Well, um, I, I would probably share with you the one about Mike Edson, missionary. Mm -hmm. uh, his testimony was this, and that is that 
he got saved out of the hippie movement hmm. in the 60s and he was just radically saved and he just so wanted to to go into the world and and preach the gospel and do great things for God and mm -hmm. he didn't know much of the Bible and he said that early on he got sent out a, um, from a church and he was on a bus heading overland into India and he had his Bible memorization, you know, scriptures and a whole bunch of tracts and he just wanted to set the world on fire for God and he got out at one of the first stops on with a bus in India, mm -hmm. got out and there was a garbage dump there. So he started to walk through the garbage dump and all of a sudden he realized that there were there was a human being crawling up to him out of the garbage. And she, he looked down and she was a leper and she had no fingers on her hands and she was fully a, fully a leper. And he, all of his thoughts about who he was as a Christian just kind of went out the window. He did not know how to minister to her. He was going to give her a track and she couldn't even grab the track with her fingers because she had no fingers mm -hmm. and she probably couldn't read it if she wanted to mm -hmm. and he was just so confronted by it that he didn't know what to do he turned around to leave and he says in his testimony he says Brad that day I met God in that garbage dump because I went to turn around and I felt his finger on my chest saying, Mike, you turn around and you go back and show that woman my love. And he turned around, went back up to the leper and said, let me help you. Wow. And he went and got a basin of water, warm water and soap and started cleaning out her, her wounds, her leper's wounds, the maggots and the dirt oh. out of her hands. And in the midst of him, showing God's love and compassion to her, all the other lepers came back. And before he knew it, he had a whole audience of the leper. He was in the middle of a leper colony in a garbage dump, and he had all of their attention. He was able to share the gospel. Wow. And he just was like, that day changed his life and the way he saw ministry, missions, and everything. Where can people find you and this book? Find me. Like I, online? Do you have <laughs> Yes, um, I, I'm online. I'm on Facebook. Brad Geis, uh, The Call to Missions is on Facebook. Like it. Um, it's on Amazon.com. Is it's, it available in Christian bookstores? Not yet. Okay, not yet. well, hopefully it will be. Okay. Is it, it should be. It, it should be. <laughs> and Geis is spelled G U I C E. G U I C E, yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Well, Brad, I just I just thank you for, for writing this book and for making these absolutely wonderful pictures available to us. And I, I pray that it stirs people to want to help make a difference in the world for Christ. Yes. Because there are so many hurting people out there, and, and it's our job. Yes. It's our job. Yes. So. Thank you for saying that. It, it, the Great Commission is for all of us. And that's the neat thing about this book is... The stories are all by modern day mm -hmm. missionaries. It's a modern day look at the Great Commission. Right. And when you go through these testimonies, you realize one thing. They're all people just like you and I. Mm -hmm. They just had a call upon their lives. They felt the tug upon their hearts. Mm -hmm. And we're all called in the Great Commission. That's right. So Whether it's with a next door neighbor yeah. or across the world. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And even if we aren't called to go across the world, we are called to pray and to support the missions missionaries that are out there and maybe even short-term mission trips yes it will change your life if well, you go well most a lot of these that's how most long-term missionaries get called to is from a short-term trip yeah so okay 
Well, are you going to continue doing this, traveling and taking uh, Yes, pictures? I am still traveling. Um, yeah, we'll see if there will be. I've been told there's another couple books of me. I don't know. This was this one took a long time to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah this, you can tell this is a labor of love, and it took a lot of time. Thank you so much for sharing it with us and for coming on our show. Well, thank you very, very much. Thank you for having me. Stop.